Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, the state of Arizona's economy as it relates to job growth and commercial and residential real estate, along with other economic indicators. It's our year-end economic roundup next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Arizona's recovery from the Great Recession has been slower than the national average on a number of levels, but the state is growing jobs and the real estate market does show signs of increased activity in the coming months. Joining us now for our annual year-end economic update is Dennis Hoffman, director of Seedman Research Institute at ASU's W.P. Carey School of Business, Lee McFeeders, research professor of economics at W.P. Carey School of Business, and director of the school's J.P. Morgan Chase Economic Outlook Center, and Jim Round, senior vice president and senior economist with Elliot D. Pollock and Company. Good to have you all here. Thanks for joining us. Great we appreciate to be it. Here, Ted. Dennis, we'll start with you. What is the state of Arizona's economy, and how long before that state gets better? It is improving. Uh, the pace of improvement continues to be sluggish, so we all keep waiting for that burst forward like we had in the, in the early 90s that you know kind of came from nowhere and, and took off. So that is what we're looking for. Um, we've, we've really had some headwinds over the last year, though, and I think they're everything from procurement, uh, DOD cuts, and we got hit probably as hard as anybody got hit by DOD cuts, from what I can tell. Um, semiconductors simply haven't taken off. We continue to face some headwinds on semiconductors. And um, maybe the buzz in Arizona just isn't here yet. You know, what, what's up with these millennials? Are they not attracted to this state the way we were? I mean, that's, that's kind of the question. The state of the economy now, and do we see a full economic recovery in 2015, 2016, 17? How long do we have to wait for this? Well, one thing I think we have to look at um, is where we are just in the maturation of this recovery. That is, you look at it, the numbers are fairly weak, and you think the recovery is in its infancy, but we're five years into it. And my expectations for next year are very similar to this year. We've had three years of very moderate growth. Next year is probably going to be a lot of the same. The big issue is the pace at which we're adding jobs, uh, getting back the jobs from the uh, peak we enjoyed in 2007 before the recession. Jim, what are you seeing now and what are you seeing in the future? Well, it, so we're growing, but it's a matter of comparing it to our history of growth. Normally, five years into a recovery, we would be almost <laughs> booming. This will be an expansion without a boom. Um, in terms of some of the numbers, we had 2% growth in 2013 in terms of jobs across the state. We're looking at around that now, probably for this year. Next year, we might see a little bit better, maybe 2.5%, but we would normally be enjoying 35 or 4%, maybe even a little bit more. So. Next year is going to be a little bit better than this. This was a bit of an anomaly having f uh, uh, the same growth rate, 2%, for two years in a row for Arizona. So expect it to get a little better, but no boom. Uh, well, a expansion without a boom uh, sounds uh, on its surface. I'd love to have a boom. But we used to be criticized a little bit for boom, bust, boom, bust cycles. Is it not healthier to have this kind of gradual growth? Well, when, when we went through prior expansions, we did better than the U.S., but what people forget is that during downturns, we also did better than the U.S. Mm. Through all of the more recent downturns, not the case anymore. We did far worse. We were 49th in job growth during our worst year, which I think was 2010. So a little bit different this cycle, and people can criticize the economy the economic base, but you're not going to be changing the economic profile of, over, of Arizona overnight. It takes a long time to do that, maybe a decade or more of really diligent work with policy economic development, and it's going to take a while. We need people moving here, and they need to be able to get mortgages. There's all sorts of stuff going on a little bit beyond our control. Or maybe some bigger long-term goals. I mean, why not set some aspirational goals? Raise the the labor force share of college grads. We have more college grads in the workforce. How do we do that? We produce them, we attract them, we retain them. Um, you know, look at other economies, you know, set some goals and, and maybe we learn from this experience and so we don't have to repeat it. But, but Lee, uh, regaining only 56% of jobs lost in the downturn, the national is uh, I think 99 if not 100%. Why are we lagging here? And you've got Nevada, Utah, Colorado, they're all top 10 for job growth. We're like 14th or something. What's going on out there? Well, there's a, a 
couple of industries that are simply out of the game right now. One, of course, is construction. Uh, ordinarily, this phase of the recovery, you'd be expecting perhaps as many as 10,000 construction jobs being added per year. Um, I think when the numbers are in for 2014, we're going to have lost construction jobs compared to a year ago. Uh, manufacturing, another key driver of growth, brings in outside dollars. Uh, we're probably not going to see any growth at all in, in manufacturing. And losing uh, the high-end parts of manufacturing, aerospace, defense, uh, semiconductor, that kind right, of thing. Right, right. And, and then you look at uh, some of the uh, sort of bread and butter industries, uh, retail, uh, for example, uh, accommodation, you just see very sluggish, moderate growth there compared to other states. In, in the past, we have heard, again, this kind of goes back to that boom-bust question, in the past we've heard construction rides everything, drives everything, not anymore, but we used to hear that that wasn't necessarily healthy to be so dependent on construction. Well, it's okay if you have other stuff, too growth states are going to be dependent on growth and you can't really change that overnight. Arizona is going to be dependent on growth. We're not going to have a full economic recovery until we see improvement in construction. I, I think we have three industries. It's leisure and hospitality, if I remember right, education and healthcare and mm -hmm. financial activities I mm -hmm. think are the ones we're growing and mm -hmm. we're still behind full recovery and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also about some basic math. Nevada wasn't doing as good as Arizona during the downturn, and they have a lot of problems in their economy. But they also started recovering a little bit after us. So early on when you start to recover, you can post some decent rates of growth, and all of a sudden you look like you're doing well until that second or third year where you slow down a bit. So we're around 14 or 15 in terms of job growth, but there's a bunch of states tightly grouped around us in terms of rate of growth. I think we have a better chance of moving into the top 10 than some of these other states, but we need that population growth and we need to see the improvement in construction. I think this is a fair point. So really what you find when you look at all of the, Nash, the nation's uh, states, all of these economies, none of them, apart from say a North Dakota or a Texas, have really done that well in this recovery. 14th, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of states that would love to be 14th. We're not in the top 10, and Jim laid this out a couple of minutes ago. We're not in the top 10, and that feels bad to many of us, <clears throat> because we're about average, you know, a little bit better than average growth right now. At this stage of the business cycle, we're accustomed to being 2x or 3x the national average. Oh, and by the way, I think there's going to be room in the top 10 with North Dakota and Texas in, yeah, in the yes. next year yes, with the way the oil. oil is going. With, with that in mind, are, are we comparing ourselves to the right folks? I mean, are we are, are expectations so high that anything out of the top 10 or not anywhere near top of average is, is unrealistic? Well, you know, I've, I've been looking at, at some of the job growth numbers industry by industry, and a, a case in point would be um, the professional technical scientific jobs. Uh, you look at some of our peer metro areas for Phoenix, Denver would be one, Seattle would be one, um, and you see that Phoenix is completely flat in that category, nothing no growth, zero growth rate over the past year. Look at Denver, look at Seattle, look at San Diego. That's one of the sectors that, that is driving growth in our competitors. Is, is it wise for us to look at the Denvers and the San Diegos as opposed to maybe cities that are more competitive with us? Well, they're the same size as Phoenix. And so that gives you a, a, a starting point. And I think that we certainly have aspirations uh, to be like Denver, Seattle, San Diego, just in terms of our industry mix and uh, in terms of our income and uh, growth rates. Sure, and Dennis said uh, we need to go after these high, higher paying jobs. And to some extent, we also are, are, we are who we are. And so in some cases, we'll have an opportunity to expand into some of these areas. In some cases, we might just want to protect the jobs that we have. I know Southern Arizona is going to be lucky if they can just retain the number of high paying jobs that they have. Maybe a little bit better opportunities in the Phoenix area, which is doing better than the state as a whole in terms of employment growth, about 3% for Phoenix, 2% for the state, closer to 1% for Tucson. So. Most, most of this is economic driven and the nature of this downturn. It had to do with housing. Half the market 
that we would normally be going after is not eligible because not having enough for down payment, credit scores, all those things that, that you add up, we calculated that it's probably about half the market. And this is gonna unwind over a four or five year period, so it's gonna be slow. But what can we do with the margin in terms of policy also impacting some of these higher value added jobs? And that gets back to the education investment, the technical stuff that you're talking about. We have to do some of the basic fundamentals right as well. Are we doing the basic fundamentals right, Dennis? Or do you got room for improvement there? Oh, I think there's always room for improvement. Um, now, you know, is this an Arizona bash? Are we, you know, are we messing up everywhere? I don't think so. I still think... And I think the puzzle is we, we have many things in place today that we've had in place during the you know, 35 plus years I've been in this state and people came and they came in droves and they came to open businesses. They came to seize opportunities. And that opportunity I think remains in Arizona. I do think we need to polish our, our marketing strategy. We may need to polish image a bit and be attracting people in this millennial group attracting people in the same numbers that we did when the baby boomers effectively surged into this state and and help make it what it is today. That, that business promotion thing, I think, is a big deal. Right now, the Commerce Authority has a couple million dollars that they spend on business pro promotion. We have an Office of Tourism, but their focus and mission is more for visitors. I, I would like to see, and this is what I recommended, that they use some deal closing monies or figure out how, how to move some monies around and double or triple that budget so we can better promote the state because I think you get more bang for the buck for those types of programs than you can incentivizing some individual businesses. There are some things we can do, and I changed my mind about the impact of some of the negative publicity that we had. In the past, we've always been fine. You can you know, list on a page 20 different items that we've done bad in the past in terms of negative publicity, and we went through it, but our population flows were still coming in. We were still mm -hmm. creating jobs, mm -hmm. and we still created mm -hmm. buzz, positive buzz after the fact. This time, the population flow train stopped. I think the negative publicity was a bigger deal this time around than people realize. I, I agree. I think it's generational, and I think this, I use the term welcoming. We have to send out signals that we're not only open for business, we're open for people. We're open for all people, and I, I think we've not sent that signal properly. No, I, I think there's another factor at work here. Some of our competitors are um, actually doing very, very well right now. Uh, of course, Texas recovered quicker, recovered stronger than Arizona. I think people um, have left Arizona looking for opportunities in Texas, for example, uh, even to Colorado. So it's not even just population inflows. There's also the issue of outflows as well. So it's net migration that we need to focus on attracting people here, keeping people and businesses here that are already here. That idea of polishing Arizona's image, compare and contrast that with incentivizing business, with tax cuts and the like. I mean, that, that, what is that dynamic? Well, one of the factors I think that uh, economic development people just have to sort of recognize is that a lot of the growth in Arizona depends on what people are doing, what they're thinking outside the state what are their circumstances, what is job growth, and so forth, uh, compared to Arizona. Back in the days of uh, previous recoveries when our job growth was strong, people would make the decision to move here because perhaps in the state they were in, their situation was not as good. Now that we're sort of in the middle of the pack, more or less, uh, I think that we have the problem of competing with the Colorado and the Texas and the Utah uh, these other attractive opportunities that, uh, that people are seeing. Uh, Jim, real quickly, I don't want to get too bogged down in this, but we just found out that an out-of-state buyer is targeting PetSmart. Looks like they're going to be uh, purchased. Yet another uh, headquarters leaving the state. Just in general terms, what does that mean to a state, to a region, to have once had certain headquarters and, and not have them anymore? So any individual company deal, you can look at it and usually you can say, I don't fault them for doing it. I don't fault them for consolidating uh, airline operations or anything else. But when you add it up, I think there is an advantage of having the headquarters, one, they're higher paying jobs, 
it's a base sector type company and it's harder to get those and you also have those individuals a little bit more engaged in terms of the public policy. A regional manager that might be here for two years and then they go back to Virginia is not going to be very engaged. Uh, that, that CEO when the headquarters is here they're going to be down at the Capitol banging their fists on the podiums like Will sometimes do. I like to see that and I think that we need uh, uh, continue to have an invigorated business community but we have to get smart with economic development as well because I think education matters more than I think people talked about in the past. I think transportation issues, infrastructure matters as much as the economic development program. So we got to think more holistically and go back to what the basic role of government is because sometimes I feel like we got away from that. You agree, agree with that? Yeah, Dan? what Jim's talking about is he's laying out, you know, we say we have to market the state, we have to, you know, create the positive image. He's starting to lay out the, the, the marketing strategy, you know. I think other states, and if you ask the economic development people, I, I know this to be the case, other states beat us up on education, fairly or unfairly. They, they beat us up. They use some of the showcase education statistics, um, and, and they beat us up with it. I think we need to turn that. We need to send out signals that we support education. We're education-oriented. We believe in knowledge economy aspirations, and that's what I'm talking about, say, setting goals. Um, we're three full percentage points in terms of labor force share below the national average. Why not set the goal to be at or above national average in terms of college educated folks in the workforce? A good idea to set that goal. Is that goal viable? We're talking long term here. Absolutely. There's, 20 this years. Is the issue. Maybe you know, 20 we, years probably. We're looking at our numbers as they come in to wrap up 2014. We're looking ahead to 2015. Anything we're discussing right now probably is not going to have much impact in the next six months. Probably even oil prices are not going to play through the entire economy mm -hmm. in the next quarter or so, maybe in the next year. As far as the national, you mentioned the national economy and how it reflects and, and impacts Arizona. Personal consumption spending seems to be low. Uh, things have gotten better, but why is this recovery taking so long? Well, it, you got to look at it by state. So mm -hmm. the, the states like Texas that have a huge, it's not just oil and natural gas, it's all those other industries that locate there. So they have a lot of chemical plants and all the other spin-off and tangential industries, and they had a good recovery because of what was happening in, in energy and now they may end up losing a little bit of share in that at the benefit of places like Arizona because we'll be paying less for gas and individuals will have a little bit more money to spend. Um, I, I still think a big chunk of it has to do, some of it has to do with the public policy and the branding and you really, the changes are noticed at the margin, but a big chunk of it I think is the economy and there are just so many problems with housing and people moving. It's not just people moving to Arizona. If you look at the data, there's a big reduction in people moving from one state to another. This is a national right. issue. It's just a little bit bigger here, but right. we don't have any influence over uh, the down payment requirements. We don't have any influence over how Fannie and Freddie might be right. wor working on these types of deals. We can only influence certain things. So where we can influence, we have to do a good job because there's a lot that's out of our control. Right. Good news is mortgage rates are really low. The bad news is you just can't have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's get to real estate. It, it looks like it's still stagnant. We're hearing, though, that maybe by the spring we could see some loosening as far as uh, residential real estate. Are you seeing anything along those lines? Well, you know, sort of an, an interesting statistic. Um, we bemoan the fact that uh, single family building seems to be very, very weak, basically uh, dead in the water right now. Probably the permit numbers are going to be lower this year than they, they were a year ago. If you add in single family permits and multifamily permits, we are actually growing faster in terms of total permits here than the nation as a whole. So you've got one segment of the market that is really going gangbusters. Meanwhile, though, the uh, really foundational single family building that that's very very weak uh, and I don't expect that to come back in any uh, really significant way in the next uh, six months or so maybe by the end of next year. We're seeing demand down and uh, it sounds like when demand uh, picks up we could have a housing shortage. Well Maybe, maybe not. It, it depends on how long this takes. And, and so if you look at the breakdown of individuals that could get a loan, if somebody's going to put down 20%, they're going to need to be in okay financial shape. They'll have to have a job. They won't be living with their parents anymore. 
Um, so, so some of that will be e economic related, and then some of it's going to be policy related, related to credit scores and things like that. But there's a lot of debate. People, people think that based on the population growth that we've had, and I think we're still top 10 in terms of population growth, with pe people don't realize, it, right. and it's really the rate of growth that matters, not the ranking, but for, right. for some perspective, I think we were eight in the last year that where it was tabulated. Sure. Um, but we are producing multifamily units, and vacancies are still low, and they're being filled because they can't go somewhere else. And so over a longer period of time, the market and economics you know, works its magic, and you get things to stabilize, and then unless there's a little bit of a boom, uh, in a particular year after some of this stuff gets corrected, uh, it may not be as big of a shortage. But if you look at our history, you end up going through a period where you have a little shortage, but then the magic happens and homes are built and then people occupy those homes and we're okay. Dennis, does the magic happen again and when does the magic happen? Well, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. Uh, more so than I was uh, right at this point. I, I kind of went from optimistic to pessimistic and now I'm warming a little bit. And here's where I think it may be driven. You, you mentioned retail a moment ago. Um, consumer confidence nationally is now back about to levels it was before the crash. Yeah, and I right. went to a regional conference uh, uh, just a week ago and I heard that California's consumer confidence numbers are now above where they were in 2005 and 2006. Uh, when California is doing well, uh, Arizona tends to get some re residual effect. I think you've got a Colorado doing well, you have a Utah doing well, Nevada seems to be perking. I'm hoping that some of this contagion shows up in Arizona. I actually think oil and gasoline price Gasoline prices, gasoline, if it would stay down at the levels it's at, and we had wholesale near a buck fifty today, that translates to a two dollar gallon of gas mm. in Phoenix. And so that could be a few weeks out. If we get that, uh, you're talking about dro dropping on the order of two billion to two and a half billion. And that's just on the household consumption of gasoline and motor fuel. I'm not even counting lower airline ticket costs and, and hmm. other residual effects that will ripple through the economy. These are tens of thousands of jobs um, on the order after four years of a, almost a full year of, of job growth that we're seeing at these numbers. So I think that can be a catalyst. I think some of our neighbors doing well uh, can help stoke uh, Arizona's growth, and after all, it's time, Ted. We're ready. We're ready. You, you mentioned the Arizona's neighbors doing well, maybe being a catalyst, maybe being contagions, if you will. Uh, yes, or does it just make Arizona seem even more of an outlier to folks? Well, thanks to New Mexico, we're actually working, <laughs> working better than some of the neighbors. Um, I, I think that there's a lesson to be learned here. I, I think that we need to pay attention to uh, some of our competitors such as uh, Denver, Salt Lake City, uh, San Diego, areas that are showing strong growth. Even Riverside is really picking up the pace in terms of, of job growth and I think that uh, we're moving into an era where we just cannot depend on people moving here and we're going to have a whole bunch of jobs and we're going to build a whole bunch of houses. Uh, I think that we have to recognize that those people that would have moved here now have a lot of choices and we're seeing a lot of that exercise with these millennials that we've been discussing. Uh, when you look at the numbers as to where your college graduates age 20 to 34 are moving, they're moving to Phoenix, true, but they are moving in larger proportions to Denver and Salt Lake and Seattle, of course, San Francisco. As, and they're following employment opportunities. So right. it is chicken and egg. And it's okay to, to look at these other states. I don't want to catch everything that California has, but if they're going to bleed mm -hmm. some potential business relocations, we'll have to try to go after them. And if we even capture a very small percentage of that very large market, we could do quite well for ourselves. So like what Lee's talking about, those are the long-term goals. Those aren't gonna happen overnight. We still need to see some recovery in what makes up our economic base, but it's fine to have these long-term goals. In fact, that's how you set policy to try to influence it longer term. Uh, last question, got about a minute or so left here. I wanna get a, a prediction, uh, something you think will make headlines, economic headlines in the coming year. Quickly, Lee, what do you think? I can say with uh 
statistical certainty, just based on the way I'm seeing the trends go, that Arizona and uh, Phoenix are going to lead the nation uh, in uh, new finance jobs, the rate of growth, and Phoenix in the absolute number of new finance jobs, which is pretty amazing when you look at the central money market centers that uh, are, in fact, uh, very, very weak in terms of finance jobs growth. Give me a quick headline. What do you think? Um, I think it's going to be Arizona is going to pay attention to those fundamentals in terms of public policy. We're going to start looking at the education, transportation, and maybe reforming economic development just a bit. And that's only because there isn't something stellar out there on the horizon that you can point to. Very quickly, Dennis, what do you think? Green shoots in uh, housing and in the Arizona economy in general in the spring. All so right. It should we, be a good springtime. We will wait for those headlines. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thanks. And that is it for now. I'm Ted Simon. Thank you for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.